Okay, it's time for the science fiction segment with our new phenom, Brandon Ellis. Brandon, take it away! Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stargazer, where we gaze to the stars and we look at the latest in science fiction and how it relates to our current world. Now, today I was looking forward to a nice special Star Trek segment. I was going to put my hat to good use today. But I recently finished Daredevil Season 3 on Netflix, and I felt so inspired. I'm going to have to scrap it for another week, so look forward to that soon. But I'm going to talk about Daredevil. You know who, uh, what Daredevil was, Alan? No clue. Well, I'm here to educate you today. Now, Daredevil is uh, based off a comic book, a Marvel comic book. And it's about um, well, a kid who, uh, in a tragic accident, a chemical spill, went blind. So he's blind, but his other senses were heightened. His, uh, his smell, his taste, his touch, etc. So, to an extent, he's pretty much a blind person who can see, but he could see better than your average, average Joe like you or me. Well, I can't see generally with my glasses. But that's a different story. Now, also, the reason why he actually goes out and pursues uh, justice, being a vigilante, is uh, his dad was actually murdered. His dad was a boxer, and he was murdered by organized crime for winning a boxing match when he wasn't supposed to. So he was inspired and took the law upon himself by night, but by day, he was a lawyer. So pretty much he uh, does his lawyer stuff, but if that doesn't work out, if someone gets off uh, the hook, he's gonna, he's gonna beat the crap out of them as Daredevil. So that's, that's his policy. It sounds simple on paper, but it's actually pretty deep if you look at the actual Netflix show. The Netflix show, it, uh, it's centered around, uh, it's part of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So that has spanned, uh, starting with Iron Man from 2008, and it's been going strong ever since. And people generally assume that it's more of a movie thing, but the MCU is so vast. It, it's, uh, it's in Netflix now, Hulu, it's on ABC, so it's pretty much everywhere. With Daredevil came the promise of a sort of team-up, a Defenders team-up, to have multiple different street-level heroes and to uh, have them team up eventually. So Daredevil was the start of that. So the thing that makes it interesting is the fact that it's so grounded. It's in a world with uh, Norse gods, and aliens, and even magic at this point, and it's so focused and grounded, and you feel like a lot of the events that are in the show, they seem kind of real. They're, they're comic book -y. don't get me wrong, a guy in a skin-tight red devil suit is beating up people, and sometimes he fights ninjas occasionally, but it feels very, very real and grounded, and it's very refreshing in a whole entire expanded universe. It's good when you have uh, a, a sort of cinematic universe that reaches multiple genres to keep it to keep it a bit uh, vast, have different things, and Daredevil keeps it more to earth, and that is a big appeal for a lot of people. Now, there's a lot more to it besides the fact that it is grounded in street level. It's actually a very, very brilliant show. Some of the best fight scenes you'll ever see in television comes from all three seasons of this show. They have uh, some sort of trope they do once every season. It's where they have a, a sort of like one track shot where though it pretty much looks like they're having one fight scene in one camera take, in one shot. The first season it was a hallway fight. The second one it was a staircase fight. And the third one, I'm not gonna spoil it. You gotta see it for yourself. But it looks like it's in one take. And actually in the third season, it actually was in one take. There was no camera chip. Camera tricks, sorry about that. It's absolutely brilliant, and uh, it's very deep. You see the uh, inner struggles of uh, someone who is a lawyer by day, who is a vigilante by night, and has to take matters upon himself. Upon himself. And another thing going for it is definitely uh, the main villain of the show, Kingpin Wilson Fisk. It's a comic book show, you would think you maybe have some sort of alien or monster or super generic bad guy of the week. It's just, Kingpin is just a pretty big dude. He's like a, a mob boss, but he's 
super intimidating, and is played by Vincent D'Onofrio. So he is brilliant, and it he offers a new layer. He's a tragic villain, something you'll learn from the first season with his backstory. And although he clearly is the bad guy, you definitely see motivation behind why he wants to take over uh, Hell's Kitchen where the show takes place. And there's definitely more to this character than I want to take over. He is the hero of his own story in his own head. That's the best villain you could possibly ask for. So the struggles of Daredevil, very real, Kingpin, and all these other characters you'll be introduced to in the later seasons, season two and season three. Um, in regards to the science fiction aspect, it's just great how um, small scale it is, but with that small scale, how impactful it could really be. And if you're a fan of superhero science fiction or just good media and television, you need to check this out. So with that said, go uh, subscribe to Netflix. It's a big deal. Thank you. Great job, Brandon. Alice on the science fiction set.